So I was recently doing a pen test for one of my clients and I really needed to scope out their entire infrastructure. It was a bunch of different domains. It was a bunch of different IP addresses that they've given me and I really needed data quick. I just want to kind of get an understanding of what it looked like, what kind of products they use, what kind of backends they use and so on. And it kind of forced me to use Shodan CLI and I realized my automation lacks a lot of processing of the data that comes with Shodan because I've never just spent enough time in the CLI and I've just usually looked at the website to quickly get some data and kind of just browse the website itself. You can also see that in my videos. Last time I did a video on Shodan, it was the same thing. I pretty much used the website and showed you how to use the Shodan search to get data. So fast forward to now on this pen test, I wanted to get data quick and I wanted to build tooling over it. And all that came down to just getting the data from the Shodan CLI, which in reality is kind of really close to what the website looks like, but also manipulating the data, cleaning it up and that kind of stuff. So that pushed me to talk about this video. I went, you know, it was perfect timing to be honest, because it pushed me to kind of make this video. And I reckon at the comments from my last video and some of the DMs I get, a lot of you ask me to make a video on how to use Shodan CLI. But before we jump into this video, you gotta do me a favor. There's two things. One, there is a giveaway. At some point through the video, I'm gonna tell you what to do and what to comment. And if you comment that exact thing, then you're gonna be entered for the giveaway. And two, you gotta do me a favor, hit that notification bell when you subscribe so you don't miss out on my content every Monday. And also this way you get notified every time I post something and you can become a Nahomi and help me get to 100K. All right. Let's talk about Shodan CLI and what does it look like and how to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize our Shodan by typing in Shodan in it. And we're going to put in our API key. The API key is on your website. You got to go to the account and go to the overview tab and they will give you your API key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at what Shodan actually does. There's all these different types of searches, tools you have, but the most two important ones that I use personally are the domain and search options. And the way it works with the domain is we're going to do Shodan domain dash H and that gives you all the different options you have. The dash D is for the domain or the details that you want or the domain results that you want. And then the dash S is to save. And I personally don't look at the dash H or the history, but you can you know, also ask and request it to come out. With the dash D, I'm gonna type in the domain name. So for this example, we're gonna use for.com. And for the dash S, you, know, you can give it a file or a folder. I'm gonna leave it blank. It's gonna just download it in the current working folder. And you can also go as far as just giving it a type of record. So example, if you're looking for A records or C names, you can also give it that. But because I want all the data, all I'm going to do is type this in. But before doing this video, I've already done this. This is going to take a while for it to come back. So I've already ran this command and this is going to come back and give us the following files. And you can see it's pretty large. It's uh, 836 here and 12 right here. And you can see they're both for the same company, but one has dash host and the other one is just a JSON file. And we're going to take a look at what both of those are. But first we need to decompress both of these files. And that's going to just give us a JSON file that we're going to take a look at JQ and process this JSON file using JQ, which makes it easier. It's like I said for JSON files. So let's take a look at what does the first set of data and or the first set of objects or the first object in this file look like. We're going to start with the JSON file. And as you can see, this is all there is. We can do the first one. We can do the second one. Now you can see as we go down the list, it's going to show us a different IP or host and each of them could have a different subdomain. So this is a subdomain on Ford.com. So it'd be access edu cf app dot .com. This is the IP. This is the type of record. So remember I said you can ask for the A records, you can ask for the C names, and it's just giving us the type of it. And also the last time it was seen. We can also do the same thing with our host file, and I'll explain why I'm doing all this. Because I think you should understand what the difference is for both of these, but Looking at this one, let's see what I did wrong here. I think it's host. Yep. You can see this is a lot um, longer and there's more data. I'm going to clean up with a dash R. And you can see here that this one has a lot more data in it. 
So for example, here you can see there is the IP value, which I don't know what that exactly is, but then there's the HTTP status, if there's a robots hash, if there is a server, so what kind of server it's using, it's giving the, the HTML or the response, and then the host has the IP address or the host information itself. And you can see there are all the other information. I'm telling you all this because I want you to understand the difference of the data that you get when you request the domain data for a particular domain name. You can use the two, but one has more data. The, you can look at the host file, kind of like what Shodan is showing you on their website. And then the other one is just for the data that you may need. And obviously you can use either one. I like to use both. You can actually use JQ and you can tell it like, hey, I just want you to give me, for example, the domains, or we can say, give me the host, for example, for every single one of these, let's see if that works. The come back null. Maybe there is a typo in what I requested. So we're gonna go back up here again. And we're going to look for how they actually call this data, which actually we need to know how this works because later on we're going to request this to another query, but this is what it looks like. And what I want here is not the HTTP, not the IP because the IP isn't what I want. The host is what we want. And let's see if this works, if I do it this way. So it looks like the domains work. And I, I think that was also a host names for each of these. So I can try host names next, there we go. So these are pretty much all the host names that are associated with each IP. So you can see this IP address has these three hosts within it. The other one has the other ones. You can obviously query for both if you really wanted to, but just for the sake of this video, what I'm gonna do is quickly just look at these domain files and tell you, you know, what the different data is. So looking back at what this looks like, let's go back to our original example, looking at the first value. So you can see there is a bunch of different fields. There is the ISP. So let's say for some reason you were looking to get the ISP, you can query for it with JQ. But this is pretty much what they have in association with Ford as a company. And this is pretty much how the Shodan database stores all this data. So if you tell host names, it's gonna give you the host names. If you go, for example, for the org, it's gonna show you what organization it is and so on. So easily we can just manipulate this data. For example, if we're just looking at doing JQ for, um, let's pick something here that is valuable to us. Maybe we want to look for the Let's see where it is. The IP string is what we want. It's gonna come back and just give us uh, all of this data. Let's see, I gotta close this. And bear with me, I'm doing this live. I'm trying to not edit as much as I can here. But doing this, oh, there's an extra dot. There we go. It gives us all of the IP addresses that were associated with our domain fort.com, depending on what the subdomain was. And we can kind of do some building and maybe we can pass this next to something like HTTPX and tell it to grab us titles and maybe give it you know, some ports like 80, 80, 80, 8,000 and so on and have it run things. And then maybe next thing you can do is run it to Nucle. But I'm going through the, the search aspect of this very quickly because I really don't use the domain search. I usually use a Shodan search, which is a lot better. I think it's a lot cooler, but I wanna show you the different fields that exist within this because I think it's very important for us to use them when it comes down to looking at the, uh, the other data that we're gonna look at. Okay, giveaway time. I know I promised to do a giveaway. We're gonna get back to the video in just a second. So if you want to jump in to the giveaway to qualify, all you have to do is tell me what is your favorite Shodan filter or your Shodan CLI search that I may have missed? And drop me a comment with that and I will pick three people to take him as a winner. And I'm gonna do two more. If you wanna enter again, all you have to do is go follow me on Instagram. It's at Nahamsek, the same as the YouTube channel, same as my Twitter. All you have to do is go follow me on Instagram and send me a DM within the 24 hours of this video dropping. And I'm gonna take two winners and gift them a subscription to Shodan. All right, let's jump back into the video. So now that you understand what these look like, you know what the data is assigned to what field. We're gonna call all of these that you see here, each of them a field, and how the data is organized in the database from Shodan, and how the data is organized in the Shodan database. It's gonna make this next step a lot easier, which is the search. And with search, you can pretty much query for any of these. So if, for example, you wanted to 
query for an organization, what you can do is you can just say, hey, I want you to search for this organization called Ford Motor. And it's going to come back and give you a bunch of data. And by default, I think they're going to give us the IP port and some of the HTTP titles. So you can see right here, it's not the title actually, it is the HTML header or the cookies are in here also as well. But you can see by default, it's going to give us all this data and it's kind of messy. Maybe I want something more important. So what I can do is I can go back and cancel this search. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell JQ, or not JQ, I'm sorry, we're gonna tell Shodan, hey, I want you to return the org here, but I'm only interested in the following field. One is the IP STR, which is the IP string that we're looking for. Next is the ports, because we wanna see what open ports there are. And maybe I wanna look for something with HTTP title. Um, I wanna see what the titles look like, for example. So we're gonna query this one and see what comes back really quickly. And bam, right here. It's like I mistyped something with port. Maybe it's not ports, it's port actually. Let's bring it up again. So now you can see all of these different IP addresses. There is some sort of password manager here. You can see what port it is and every single bit of data that it's found. But we can also get more creative. We can say, hey, I want you to not show me anything that has the port 80 or 443. Let's try this one out. And now you can see it's giving us a bunch of different random ports. You can see there is a 10,443. There's some like showed, uh, there are some SSH port like 22, but this is really good data for us to have. We can either take each of these hosts and rescan them ourselves, or we can just use something like HTTPX and see if there's any web apps on here hosted and what kind of stuff comes out of it. So these are different, your different options, but so this alone with itself that what we have on the screen is not really something that we can digest and pass it to our next tool. There's a bunch of spaces. We need to kind of fix what the IP and port format looks like. Maybe in some cases we got to add HTTP to it, whatever that is. We're going to take a look at this data and just quickly show you how easy it is to convert this data into readable data for something like HTTPX, for example. So we're going to pass it to Auk and we're going to say, hey, I want you to print the first position and the second position in whatever the data that comes back. Let's start one more time. There was a typo. I need to type in print here actually for it to work. And that's gonna give us this, but there is still spaces here. I'm just gonna clean that up also with TR. We're gonna say, hey, I want you to replace the spaces with a column because you know that's what we need for, in order for it to look like a valid port number for that IP address. And now we have our data that we have that could easily be passed to either Nucle, for example, for it to do some scans. Let's try one more time since Nucle wasn't working. You can pass it to Nucle again right here. And obviously I'm just doing this for the demo purposes, but you can see it's gonna take that data. It already has the IP import associated with it. And it's gonna do its thing with Nucle. Obviously that's not how you should run Nucle, but I just kind of want to show you, you can pass this data to another tool. What, but what I like to do with this data is just run an HTTPX again because the data from Shodan sometimes could be older than I like it to. And just telling it, hey, I want you to grab titles and I want you to follow redirects. I think that's how you do host. Let's actually look at how that looks like really quick. We're going to look at the redirects. Follow host redirects. And now we actually are getting better data. This way we know actually which of these hosts have something important in them. So for example, if I grab this and put it in my browser, we can see that it's coming back as 400. There was no title, it's accurate, which is this one, it says Telmix. And I can actually see what's being hosted on this, which is accurate with Telmix. And I can see that I've identified some sort of a host on a different random IP address. And obviously you don't have to exclude port. These are just examples. You have to kind of figure out how that looks like for you and what you wanna look for when you're using Shonen. The last thing that I think is even more interesting to me outside of looking for organizations is one, looking for SSL. So we can actually look at SSL where it's Ford.com. And doing the same thing here, we're gonna actually ask for it to give us just port and titles. And now we can see that it's doing the same thing. We're gonna just you know recreate this data and make it look nicer to get rid of our spaces. Obviously there's other ways you can do this that potentially is better and um, more sufficient than what I'm doing, but 
I'm just going to run this really quickly. You can see now we have all these different SSL stuff, all these different IP addresses using our showdown fields, our SSL for forward, and it's giving us all this different data. Again, you can also get better at just giving it actual ports or excluding, for example, port 443. Maybe this would give us other data that we don't know about that could have missed, for example, 8443, a bunch of different ones. So now what we can do is we can go back to our other tools and say, hey, I want to do maybe HTTP probe or I want to do HTTPX with the title, for example, and it's going to give us the titles of each page so we can have better data. Obviously, the next steps could be different depending on what you want to do and what your your, your hacking style is and or what kind of stuff you want to do this data. But for the sake of the example, I'm kind of just showing you how you can get some cool data using the Shodan CLI after you understand what the host fields look like. And last but not least, this is my favorite thing to do with Shodan. We can actually take a look at the Shodan search and then we can say, hey, I want you to look for the actual uh, autonomous system number. So for this example, since we're looking at Ford, I have the ASN number here. I'm going to type in AS3389. And we're going to say, hey, I want you to pull the field's host name. And that's all we want. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a list of every domain and subdomain of mostly the subdomains associated with this uh, AS number and it comes back it's gonna give us a bunch of random host names but what's cool about this is it could also let's do host names actually what's cool about this is that it could actually give us potential domains other than fort.com that are hosted on this AS number and we can do that easily by again cleaning up our data we're gonna just do another TR here this time we're gonna uh, substitute our semicolons with a new line so you can actually put a space in between them and add a new line instead of a semicolon. And then we're going to do a sort you to make sure all of this data is unique and there are no duplicates. And I have a tool called Domain Parser. If you actually go on GitHub and type in the Domain Parser and go, it's going to come up. You're going to have to compile it yourself. But what this does is it's going to give us a list of all these different domains. And we're going to do a sort you again so there's no duplicates one more time. And what Domain Parser does, it's, it's parsing these domains and telling us the exact absolute domain in here that could be hosted on this AS. And you can see there is dealer connections. Uh, these are two unique ones because of the spelling. There's Ford, uh, Ford.com and so on. So that's one way of looking at all these different AS numbers and getting a list of domains. And then you can actually automate this and say, hey, uh, if you want to write a bash function, you can say, hey, I want you to do some more stuff to this. For example, maybe we can do an XARG and having this rerun showdown on the search option and we can say hey i want you to do a host name or ssl even maybe for each of these domains and i want you to return field ip and port and hopefully this is live hopefully it works we're going to take a look and see if it actually worked out so it looks like it did work, but I want to do IP string because if you do IP, it's not what we want. If you want to look in for the field IP underscore STR. I keep on making this mistake every time I do my pen test. So we're going to run it one more time. But what this is going to do this time is it's going to pass the results, every single line of results from that first domain. And it's going to give us the associating IP address with each of those and their port number and so on. So this is kind of like a loop that you can do based on the AS, get all the four domains or your organization's domains, pass them back into the host field uh, or the search and pull the IP addresses and do some more work and then you know, kind of build on top of it. So that alone itself could be another video. Let me know if you want a part two, but I think that was a good place for us to stop. It kind of shows you the basics. It kind of shows you how to use the CLI, what the data looks like, and it also kind of gives you an idea of what data to pull, how to pull it, and how to refeed it back into Shodan using XRs, or maybe you can do a loop with a bash script or Python or whatever you want to do. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Does this help? Do you want to see more videos like this? Drop me a comment. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe, hit the like button, and support the channel. All right, that's it. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.